morning and welcome to St. Mary's for the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass this morning is offered for the repose of the souls of Jim and Gloria Steffenberg and in commemoration of their 50th wedding anniversary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy bestow we pray your grace abundantly upon us and make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven through our lord jesus christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say, The Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity that he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The Word of the Lord. 
from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do nothing out of selfishness or out of vainglory. Rather, humbly regard others as more important than yourselves each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not, but afterwards changed his mind and went. 
The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, Yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, The first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet, even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. First impressions and repeated impressions are usually pretty hard to break, but a first answer is not always a final one where human beings are concerned. And so even if the first impression is true or mostly true at the time, it does not necessarily always remain so. And that's what Jesus gets at a bit with this story of the two sons. The first son gives the impression of being disobedient, but in the end goes to work. And the second son does the opposite. The second is concerned, perhaps, with the immediate response of the father, wanting to avoid trouble with him by giving a negative answer. But both sons are selfish. The first, however, undergoes a change of mind and heart, and then goes to work in the vineyard as he'd been asked. The second son merely diverts attention away from his selfishness by saying yes, but without going. And so Jesus indicates to the chief priests and the elders who have come here to question him that they are like the second son, and that they're fooling themselves if they think that they're standing firmly in the way of God. They have not heard St. Paul's admonition, let anyone who thinks he stands firm take heed, lest he fall. We can never be too sure of our positions as human beings, because we're subject to so many whims and passing fancies. The Pharisees like the Pharisees judge the tax collectors and the sinners that are around them based on their first impressions. And they also have a good opinion of themselves because of their own initial response to God's invitation to work in the vineyard. They say yes to him and think that they are standing firm thereby. But those that the first son represents, the tax collectors and the prostitutes, are more willing to respond to what is right in front of them. At first, it's the lures and the pleasures of the world, but when they encounter something more, something deeper, something better, they respond to it. That something is the preaching of John the Baptist. Jesus has been questioned by the chief priests and the elders about his own preaching and his authority, by which authority he does all that he does, and they're trying to entrap him. And so he turns it around and asks them, where was John's preaching from? Was it from human beings or from God? And they're stumped by this. They don't want to answer either way, because if they say from human beings, they fear the crowd, the crowd who went out and heard John the Baptist and converted and repented and who loved John. And they feared to say from God, because Jesus would ask them why they did not listen to John if they believed that. And so Jesus has caught them in their own trap. But these chief priests and elders don't respond the way that the tax collectors and the prostitutes do. They think that they're standing firm in the way that God has called them to. They think that their initial response and their outward show of worship is what God is seeking. But we can take a lesson from the tax collectors and the prostitutes, those who are humble enough to recognize when they have done wrong and to respond to God's invitation to a better way of life. Just this past week, we celebrated one of these very tax collectors that Jesus mentioned in this passage. St. Matthew's feast day was last Monday. Matthew was a tax collector, a son of Israel, who had initially said no thank you to God's invitation to go out into the vineyard, but he later changed his mind. And similar to those who had heard the preaching of John the Baptist, John the Baptist, Matthew's catalyst for conversion was also an encounter with someone that is, with Christ himself. Jesus called him from his tax collector's post, and immediately Matthew was struck by this man that was calling him to follow him. Surely he had heard his preaching at some point, or heard of the miracles that he was working, but there was something even more, 
and that personal invitation of Jesus to Matthew that prompted him to leave behind all that he had and to follow Jesus in freedom of heart and in security of being in God's grace. And so we can think about how Matthew recounted this story. We just read from his very gospel with what fondness of hand and heart Matthew recalled this story of how God did not judge him based on his initial response to him, did not judge him on any initial impression, but constantly called him to himself and was more than happy to show him mercy in his life. And so we have to consider how people can get off on the wrong track in life at different points for all sorts of reasons, but they're not doomed thereby to remain on it forever. God has mercy on us all, and we're all in need of that mercy. And so we can think about the lesson of the tax collectors and the prostitutes, of their willingness to undergo a change of heart through their encounter with God. We can also learn from the chief priests and the elders, because it is those who take their faith seriously that always have to be especially on guard against thinking that their initial yes to God is conclusive. It's by the grace of God that we hope to persevere, that God will sustain us to the end in our yes, but we do need to be frequently reminded that we're all works in progress, that just like those who initially said no, we need to continually undergo a deeper conversion to God, and that we always need to be more humbled and more purified through our continued, continued encounter with him. We need to be cautious against any rash judgments or inclinations to hold grudges against those who don't seem to be following God at any particular moment in their lives. And so we can think, who in our lives have we judged conclusively based on our first impressions? Who needs a second chance? Who do we have the opportunity to reconsider our opinion of? Because we know that not all start well, but that that's not the most important thing. What matters more is how we finish. That if we finish well, we will enjoy God's kingly power. That he will invite us into his kingdom to share with him the kingdom, the banquet that he has prepared for us. And so, like St. Paul, we ask that we might always have the mind of Christ, to put on the humility of Christ, and to constantly turn to our Heavenly Father, recognizing that he does not hold the sins of our past against us, but wishes to welcome us into his full fatherly embrace. And let us now stand and profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father's love for his children and desire to give them what they need, we present him our petitions. We pray for the Church throughout the world, especially for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all the bishops of the Church, 
that we might be inspired to preach Christ to the ends of the world, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for our country, for peace within it, and for justice and the common good. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of those suffering from natural disasters, especially the wildfires out west and the hurricanes that have hit the southeast, that the Lord might bring them through these times of difficulties, they might have the consolation of the Christian community. Let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in the number of young people answering the Lord's call to the priesthood and the religious life, let us pray to the Lord. And for the needs of our parish, and particularly that we might be a vibrant witness to Christ in the midst of our community, let us pray to the Lord. For the repose of the souls of the, all the faithful departed, especially for Jim and Gloria Steffenberg, for whom our Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, we ask you to fill us with the love of your Son, that we might be inspired to follow you constantly throughout our lives, and that you might answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim.
you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us in this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, 
admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the distribution of Holy Communion, uh, I will be in the center of the, the middle aisle. If those uh, in the center would follow the directions of the ushers, so we'll start from the back and work our way to the front. For those that are downstairs in the basement, Father John Paul will come down immediately to distribute uh, to those down there. And then after he finishes downstairs and I've finished the center, then we'll go to the side aisles. So please, for those up here, just follow the direction of the ushers. In all cases, we'll start from the back and work towards the front.
Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. As it was announced last week, uh, this weekend is Father Leo Camerati's last weekend with us. He's, of course, the other associate pastor in the parish. He's been reassigned by the provincial to one of our parishes in New York. And so we give thanks for the time that he was with us, short as it was. We appreciate uh, his gifts of preaching and singing and his other ones that he shared with us. Uh, but he is outside on the sidewalk after Mass if anyone wants to say goodbye and um, just speak with him for a few minutes. We do ask that you not mob him all at once, but try to space things out uh, so that, as to respect the social distancing as much as possible. Uh, on October 7th and 8th, we will be having uh, are participating in the Rotary Congress, uh, which will be traveling throughout the Archdiocese of Hartford. So on the 7th and 8th, we'll have uh, exposition and adoration and uh, a rosary every hour on the hour over at St. Joseph's Church on Edward Street. If you'd like to sign up to participate in that, the sign-up sheets are in the vestibule. Uh, you can do that after Mass. And finally, as always, we have to disinfect the pews after we're finished here. Uh, so if anyone is able to stay and assist with that, we would appreciate the help. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>